Ladies and gentlemen, this is what is commonly known as money. It comes in all sizes, colours and denominations, like people. We'll be using quite a bit of it in the next two hours. Luckily, I have enough for all of us. Excuse me. 
Nein, wir müssen ab. Edward, one there is your. Well then, young man grand, father. for the new suit. It's very nice. My pleasure, young man, my pleasure. One has to be smart when observing the effects of money on the arts and Mr. and Mrs. First Nighter. Good gentlemen, give him a further end and drive him on to these delights. We shall, my lord. Mr. Gertrude, leave us too. We have closely sent for Hamlet Hiller that he as well by accident may hear a front of Delia. Her father and myself, lawful espions, will so bestow ourselves that seeing unseen, we may have there encounter frankly judge. And by him third act just started. Rose and Cranes and Gildersterns just gone off somewhere. Hello. Guy, you are rather late. The third act's already begun. You very nearly missed the nicest part. The chopper was delayed. Anyway, this is the bit I'm really keen on. And as you say, it is the nicest part. To be... I've seen it. Or not to be... Shakespeare, right? a sea of troubles and by opposing
Moment. Sisters Agnes and Esther, your aunts. How do you do? Hello, Auntie. How do you do? Hello. To sleep. To sleep, a chance to dream. I bear the love. For in that sleep of death. What dreams may come when we have shuffled off this mortal coil? Must give us all. We're making too much noise on with the show. For who could bear the whips and scorns of time? The oppressor is wrong. The foul man's contumely. That fellow's taking license, in my view, of the unworthy take when he himself might his quietus make. Lawrence Harvey. He really knows his job. The most central and fundamental principle of our work is the absolute authenticity of any of its employees' qualifications and credentials. Each must be tops in his field. Otherwise, well, otherwise it's mere quackery. Just what is our work, Dad? It's not so easy to define as one might think, lad. Not so easy. Regard the city. It's just like where I was born. Exactly, and nine-tenths of the people on this planet. And you know, young man, some of those people will tell you that in these cities are shops. Curious sort of food shops that spring up from time to time, with signs reading, new owner, new policy, big, get acquainted sale, and offering goods at ridiculously low giveaway prices. What about ciggies? Cigarettes were not sold, as they'd been linked rather closely with cancer of the lung. The word quickly gets around, and the lucky few manage to load up and take away as much as they can humanly carry. Usually much more than they can ever use or keep, you understand. The shop is quickly gutted, clean as your proverbial bone, and latecomers are met by closed doors, shuttered windows, and a different sign move to new location, but no clue as to where that new location is. If you want it any time, I can give it, but you better hurry, cause it's going Well then, Pontius, if that really is your name, take us to your leader. We've just taken over some new companies, son, and the boardroom tycoons are waiting for us to get to work on them. Winthrop, it's a guy. When I bought this paper, it had one of the highest circulations of any Sunday newspaper in this country. It was a paper with a heart, Winthrop, and a circulation. Now just look at this. Read it out, Winthrop. Paper. 
Yeah, but, uh, Sagai, you said, uh... Yes, I know what I said, but read it. Detectives made inquiries from holiday makers at Brighton, Ojadwy. What is Ojadwy, Winthrop? It's a uh, French for today, Sagai. Uh, yes, of course. We are running an English newspaper, Winthrop. We are. Good point. Good point. In connection with the murder last McCready of the Neunenswanzig Yara Fräulein, 29 year old girl, Helen McNabb, whose mutilated body was found washed up on the beach. Open brackets. T he he. Close brackets. Read on, Winthrop. We printed an apology. And in what language was the apology written? Polish. Polish? Polish. Going to stop, Winthrop. It will, Sagai, it will. It will, it will, it will. Immediatement. <clears throat> Gentlemen, we are a nation on the move. Any man, Jack, who fails to realize that, had better don his think cap. Common Zen savvy tells us that the prestige of the British automobile is being severely threatened by the encroachment of the small or mini car image. We are rapidly becoming a tiny car nation. <laughs> so does it not follow then that a nation of tiny cars could very soon become a nation of tiny persons? <laughs> So, patently then, it is in the highest national interest that we counter this tiny car image by introducing an automobile that will hold its own size-wise against the American big boys, yet with no sacrifice to traditional standards of taste and function. And so, gentlemen, may I submit to you, with much pleasure and pride, the new great British Zeus. It's still pretty much on the drawing board, as we say, gentlemen, but let's run it up the flagpole and see who salutes it. The British Zeus. Designed for the man in the know, the man on the go. And wherever he goes, he can accommodate a bevy of personal friends and acquaintances. Let's think salesmanship and slogan. Winthrop. Yes. Um, what about this power to spare under this big baby's 40-foot hood? What about it? Performance. Neither, uh, Hampton. Uh, you're sure to enjoy the big gangs all here back seat. <laughs> uh, Hampton, try that again with an American accent. It was an American accent, sir. <clears throat> Lord, what's going on over there? Mountainous. Uh, getting the feel of this big baby mm -hmm. has been one grand thrill, believe you me. Hmm. Best sleep on it, eh? Don't want to overextend. Gentlemen, as you know, the family tree of a certain grand guy, Guy Grant, has borne no fruit. The stoutest efforts by my sisters and I, uh, quite independently, of course, has not yielded 
grand progeny. By good luck, however, one, perhaps two soirees ago, I chanced upon a likely lad. And gentlemen, may I tell you, it was your proverbial love at first sight. Yeah, paternal, of course. <laughs> so, gentlemen, it is with great pride and pleasure that I introduce you now to my only son and proge, Master Youngman Grand S. Hello, he's a jolly grand fellow, for he's a jolly grand fellow, for he's a jolly grand fellow, and so will say all of us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're damn good lads, the lot of you. <laughs> you too, Guy. Yes, thank you. And you're thinking men as well, if memory serves. Unfortunately, that fact is not always reflected in our uh, quarterly reports. Anyway, gentlemen, may I take a page from our own late, great Rudy the Kip Kipling? Let our Kipling speak. There was a young lady from Exeter, and all the young men threw their sex at her. Just to be rude, she lay in the nude, while her parrot, a pervert, took pecks at her. <laughs> Gentlemen, my man Jeff has your envelopes. Please do not open them until you are outside. Inside, you will find a month's generous remuneration a map containing a clue as to your present whereabouts, and a set of day-glow references to present to your next lucky employer. Leave your flowers and your pencils on the table as you go, would you? Milk or lemon, Esther? Both, please. Oh, Hello, dears. Oh, there you are, Guy. Oh, angels cross. Hi, Guy, always on the go. Uh, we're just having tea, darling. She will join us. Yes, yes I Captain. do. Yes, now you will take tea, young one. This is bloody North America. What's yours? I don't know. I've been fired before, but never in Afghanistan. Come, Guy. I, I, I think no. not, darling. No, no. Hello! Oh, Just in time for tea. Come on. I say, my good man. <laughs> All right, mate. One at a time. One at a time. Jim! Oh, oh. How are you? <laughs> I think I rather fancy a hot dog. Yeah, I hope it's this. Say hello to Guy. Say hello to everyone. Hello, Agnes. Hello, Arthur. <laughs> Say hello. Ginger, this is Guy's new son, Youngman Grand. Hello. Pleased to meet you. <laughs> this is my little Bitsy. Hello, Bitsy. Hello, oh, Guy. Hey, uh, hot Frankfurt, dear. Hot Frankfurt. Guy, we don't have oh. one. Oh. There is, in fact, a friendly hot dog vendor who solicits from this very platform. Look, lady, do you want it or don't you? I don't know, darling. Go and ask the station master. What can this be? Silky, through the use of infant head oils. Ginger, that's one of our new acquisitions. Oh. Uh, Silky, as it says here, it is unconditionally guaranteed to make your hair softer than that of your own darling child. It's remarkable stuff. Why don't you try some? Yes, I will. Try it, try it, Ginger. Try it. Thank you. Righto, mate. Now, what do you want? Yes, I'd rather care to have a hot doggy, please, my good man. Oh, you'd like hot doggy, would you? Yeah. Right. One hot doggy you shall have me. Ah, my Second World War Nazi atrocity book came at last. Oh, <laughs> you know what Betsy and I do? We sit down and imagine all those atrocities being done to sex criminals. Yes, yeah, sex criminals and the like. And that Dr. Thorndike. What's that, Ginge? Bill Thorndike, a sexy criminal? The man you sent me to, he behaved very strangely. I say, hot doggy, do you want some onions? I will call egg mayor. Do you want some onions? Oh, I love onions. Absolutely loads of them, Pierre. Do you want some HP or mustard? Ah, uh, neither, thank you. All right, that'll be ninepence. Ninepence? Ninepence. Ah. 
Now, don't you go away, Van Law. I shall be back with nine English pennies. Oi! Oi! And before he said another word, and while my head was still leaning back, he dropped a raw egg into my mouth. Come on, get a move on. There we are, there. What's this, a fibre? I can't change a bleeding fibre. Are you quite sure this was an egg? Oh, come on then, the train's on the move. I can't change this fiver. Come on, I ain't got all day. I say, Ben, no, no tricks now. This train is on the move. I can't change I want my bloody chair. fiver. And then, do you know what he did? Oh, why? He got a huge slab of wet, greasy bacon and wrapped it round my head. <laughs> Case. Case. Nicky, I think we're on to something here. I don't care if I do! Don't lose it! You're certainly putting everybody on today, Dad. Well, you know, young and sometimes it's not enough merely to teach. One has to punish as well. A little bit of the old pause. Pause for pause. Yes. You see, uh, mark that person of irritable mien. He's made a million out of man's inhumanity to man. Salt of the earth. Yes, salt of the earth. Perhaps together we can restore his faith in the mystery of life. God say close the door, there's a bloody draft. There's something bloody weird going on in here. I've been trying on this line for 40 years. Very interesting. Your papers, please. What? I've got a first class ticket to wedding. A few questions, please. What? Please. What? Please. What? Please. Oh, Gillis. Gillis. Oh, 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 Gillis. Was that ginger? Uh, it never happened to her head. Oh, she's tried the silky. It's the price of vanity. These are strange times we live in, son. Yes, each of us does our best. Who can say more? But, Guy. Yes, dear. You know Clemens is a young man. They're all with us. Why did he want to get married? And I was wondering if we could help. Surely there must be something we could do. Oh, I don't see any reason why we shouldn't. Henry. Grand to see you, Guy. And you. Oh, Agnes. Henry. Yes, <laughs> Hello. Uh, this the boy? This is the boy. Young one, Prince Renske. Hello, Prince. 
Hello, young man. Here for the shoot? Yes. Well, come on. Now, attend to the baggage. Right, right, right. Careful. These country roads can be dangerous. Oh, here come the fuzz. That's convenient. Could be routine or mere damnable harassment. Said guy. Hello, Corporal. I'm sorry to detain you, Sir Guy, but uh, HQ said it might be important. Oh, well, let's see, shall we? Ah, oh, I say. Thank you very much, Corporal. Thank you very much. <clears throat> yes, Corporal? Any answer, Sir Guy? Uh, there we are, Corporal. And good night. Good, good night, Sir Guy. Keen guy, isn't he? Bloody keen. Damn fine chap, too. And he's too. bloody keen, too. Not like that oik, Paul Free. What's up I with I invite Paul him Frey? to one of my shoots, and he shot a runner. Shut no. up. Yeah, saw it with my own eyes. Poor little thing was trying to escape. Chaps these days have no sense of bloody sportsmen. Damn the fella. Yeah, right, yeah, Frank. The old values are crumbling. Oh, Barry, what on earth is that Tuff's gun you've got there? This is a 24 over and under. It's a sporty little item, but uh, personally I prefer a 12 ball. I don't mind missing one or two pheasants, provided I can occasionally get a quick kill. Aye, quick kill, that's the name of the game. It's best the little bakers quickly, eh? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Dogs are on point, guy. Yes, yeah, so they are, Lionel, so they are. Still in all, I don't fancy relying entirely on dogs, do you? Hey, what? <laughs> Hit the deck! Now for a good, clean kill. Last! Missed. Over to you, Red Leader One. Good shooting, Red Leader One. A direct hit. Good God. Nothing like a good, clean kill. Eh, Henry? Your bird, Sagi. It is the best shooting I've seen in 30 years of service. Well, this is your new home, young lady. Isn't it marvelous? Oh, it's perfectly lovely. Morning, Good Mama. Morning. Good morning. Ah, it's really fantastic. Oh, it's I can't can believe it. Can and that big clock is that yours as well. Oh, we're going to have a good time here. I can Let's tell you. Feel it, me, Paul. Oh, get the key quick. Let's go. Get your key out now. Scarf for a These all ours. Welcome, welcome, young men friend. To the finest family in the land. A name that will forever stand. Grand, grand, grand. They've been practicing. Marvelous. Come along. Oh, excellent, excellent, excellent. This is Sol. Welcome. And his fiancée, Clemence. And over here, we have Mrs. Hetherington, Angela, Martha, Mary. A Naseby, sir. A Naseby, Withers, Fran, Beverly, and uh, if memory serves... Norris, sir. Uh, Norris, sir, uh, the uh, head gardener. Hello, Norris. Ladies and gentlemen, may I introduce you to my new son, 
Jarman. words corrupt? I don't know. Uh, let's try it. Agnes? Yes? Nipple. Well, there's no immediate physical change. I don't really think words corrupt. No? But they keep prosecuting these people for selling pornographic books. Mm. Why don't we write a dirty, filthy pornographic book and then print it? Yes. But leaving blanks where the dirty words were. Yeah. And then people could write what they wanted themselves. It'd be much more exciting. Yes, and much more creative. Mm. How about this? Panting with desire, Lord Peter ripped open her, revealing her, and leaned forward and her. Brilliant, young one. But why leave it at pornography? What about the Bible? The Bible? Yes, the Bible. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the good book. Can you make it better? Groove with your space commander, Dad. This is Michael Barrett reporting from the famous Crufts Dog Show. And here's Mr. Mbongo just after the incident. A new breed of dog, if in fact it was a dog, made a spectacularly unfortunate debut at the show when it opened here today. The entry in question was the so-called Congo Black Dog, known as, or registered anyway, as Big Fang. And it's a curious cat-like creature, today covered in a poodle-type coat which almost obscured its face. And when its owner, Mr. Mbongo from Masawa in West Africa, took it into the arena, the beast went absolutely berserk. It ferociously attacked the other entries. There was devastation, there was havoc near panic in the galleries. And it's reported that the dog was actually eating an unspecified number of its fellow entries. This is Michael Barrett returning you to the studio. Oh, so dreadful, guys. Switch it over. That's better. Can't imagine how a thing like that could happen. At Crafts. A direct hit on St. Pete's, Dad. Good, good. Good, young man, good. Well, can't do anything with the grouse guy. She says they're bound to a cinder. Incompetence in the kitchen, eh, sister? Guy. Guy. Cook said they were like that when she opened the Carry on, game Evan, young man. Ashes and bones. Ashes and bones in the game bag? Oh, I don't like the sound of that. Eh, hey, young man? Me neither, Dad. There. Oh, God, we simply must eat because I'm starving. Yeah. Now, come along. What? What? I'm starving. The whole world's starving. Well, look here, sister. Let me say that if, uh, if Cook has, in fact, spoiled our table bird, why don't we all go down to Shea Edward? Uh, well, if memory serves, uh, an honest working man can still get a good Lancashire hot pot. Shed was such fun. That's a splendid idea. Can't we settle our differences amicably? No, son, no. Not while there's a cathedral standing. <laughs> Good evening, Sir Guy. 
Good evening, Mr. Guy. Everything is arranged for you. Good, good. Sir <laughs> Guy, you do me a great honor. Edward, nonsense, nonsense. I've been promising myself one of your gastronomic experiences for some time. We Everything don't. is we don't. prepared as you ordered. Good, Sir Guy. good. Then I suggest we waste no more time. Of course. Aren't you dining with us? No, dear Agnes, no. When the gourmet mood is on me, I needs must dine alone. You remember Charles, Sir Guy? Charles, Charles, comment ça va? The Ardennes Offensive, was it not? Give us one of the old ones, Charles. I love the old ones. May I suggest? Yes, come on, c'est n'est-ce pas le caviar? The caviar, yes. Beluga, of course. Mais certainement, le beluga. Et après, le poulet avec les truffes périgodines. The truffes périgodines. It's very interesting, Edward. But, um... Tonight, I fancy putting your canard <coughs> orange to the test. Eh? Of course, you have herb. It is to be canard à l'orange. Et yeah. après, pomme purée, petit point, c'est tout? C'est tout. C'est tout. Well, c'est tout. Uh, sommelier, yes, it'll do very nicely. Sir God, Ren, last of the great gourmets. Will you approve of the wine, Segui? Cork is four to seven. But the wine aussi, Segui. A rare combination. This plucky little burgundy Henri has got my juices of playing. Mm -hmm. Merci, Segui. La robe. La robe, Edouard. Ah, oui. Pour aider la digestion. Oh, extraordinaire. For the first time in England, Sergi. Mm -hmm. La chaise gastronomique. La chaise gastronomique. With the Ministry of Transport Safety Belts. Oh, another first for England. What? Mm -hmm. Comfortable. Oh, très comfortable. Oui, no! That's better. Wait, wait, sir, keep ready, dinner. God almighty, what's going on here? Wait, oh, come on, come here, come here. Come here, Edward. The odd thing about caviar is that one never gets enough taste. A toast, sir, guy. You think I never touch it? A little chopped onion. Mm-hmm. A little chopped egg. A tout en son. But a wonderful fish is a sturgeon. This can only come from a virgin. Yes, 47, it is 47. Excellent, excellent, excellent. This is the canaille. Mm. Yes, I love a good canaille. Mm. A young rough red, if you please. Mm. Yes, I must speak with the chef. I must speak with the chef. Indeed. We parlez avec Georges. My compliment, chef. My compliment. That's the last we shall see of him tonight. It was to be a soiree musical. Hold it, Tiger. Big smile. It's the championship, Aunt Agnes. Ike Jones and Joe Thompson. <laughs> Thompson has just climbed into the ring looking very fit, very fit indeed, and getting a warm round of applause from this fine sporting crowd here tonight. All of them asking themselves the same question. Can the challenger deliver his punch? We know he's got it, but can he deliver it? Will he stay conscious long enough 
to deliver it. Good evening, my lady. Hello. Oh, I travel with you, Grandpa. Are we sure? Uh, Jeff. Last of the old bulldog breed, eh? <laughs> and here he comes now, the heavyweight champion of the world, Ike Jones. Just listen to the reception he's getting. Just listen to this crowd. Let's have a look at the record of these two rugged customers. Barry. I have reason to believe this may be an exceptional bout. <laughs> yes, Jones may be strong, granted. In my opinion, Joe Thompson could easily be that much too nimble for him, eh, Jeff? Don't miss him. Well, both these men mount the ring with very impressive records behind them. The champion has been unbeaten in a total of 78 bouts. He's never been knocked out. In fact, he's never even been knocked off his feet. But he has had to take plenty of punishment from time to time. Ike Jones was certainly not hiding behind the doors, they say, when fighting heart and guts was being handed out. My lords, ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. 15 for the heavyweight championship of the world. Between and presented to you in this corner from Battersea, London, the British and British Empire champion, Joe Thompson. And with pleasure, for the first time, in Great Britain, from Detroit, United States of America, the heavyweight champion of the world, Ike Jones. Now to the center of the ring, getting their final instructions now from the referee. Both fighters looking confident and relaxed. And the crowd here at this arena settles back to what promises to be a very hard and lively scrap between these two giants. Now they've returned to their corners, and we wait for the bell. And here's what he did, hit the street of the eye. Good day. Only death to do away from him. There it is. Well, opening the first round of this brutal match for the heavyweight crown. Both boys circling each other now, carefully, each measuring his man, showing due respect for the lethal power in the gloves of the opponent. You're too much. Come on in. Ooh. Oh, you fantastic. One, two. Guy, there's a member of CERT. I thought they were just good friends. The crowd seemed to be sickened by the sight of no blood. There they are, son. The Dark Blues. The Oxford crew. Stout hearts, the lot. Where are they going, Dad? Nowhere in particular. Back and forth, back and forth. Working out. Honing the edge, if one may dare to coin. They're practicing for the big race with the Cambridge Eight. That'll be our man, son. We'll be wanting a word with him. How do you do? My name is Guy Fairness. Master, this is Thank you. I realize that this is hard to defend, but the time is not there. Well, you can go off the door. You can get back to step three. Uh, and um, arrange for... Uh, so that would be a little bit. Now, it wouldn't take too long, then you would have seven tries. Well, that much is done. Done and double done. Bit surprised he went for it, actually. I mean, the race being such a traditional thing and all that. Well, son, as you proceed along the great road of life, sometimes referred to as the yellow brick road, you'll find that the... Aha! Uh -huh. <coughs> I 
right there. What's all this about? What do you make of this, son, eh? What do you think this is? Looks like an advert. What's it all about? Yes. This mm. car is fun. <laughs> Lucky for you, it wasn't towed away for that matter. Hey, what is this thing, Ashley? Hey, what is it? Now that, that happens to be a parking ticket that I've issued to you for the violation. But my son thought it was an advert, didn't you? What? I thought it was an advert. Yes. I can't see the point of it myself. I, I really can't see the point at all. The point is that you are in violation, in that you violated the traffic rule. In fact, Get out of it! by parking your car in an loading zone. That's what it's all about. What do you mean, loading zone? There's no loading going on around here. What are you talking about? What do you about? think these sods are doing with them pressurised firkins, then? Tell me that, then. Pressurised firkins? Firkins! You know, not many years ago, I, I can recall there when you could buy a decent pressurised firkin for a couple of pounds. Let go, sir. All right, let go, sir. The whole thing is, these sods aren't loading pressurised firkins, they're unloading. Constable, there's, now there's a rub. There's okay. no difference. There's no difference at all, and don't call me constable. It's Sergeant Warden, not Sergeant Warden. Well, you're trying to tell me then, Sergeant Warden, there's no difference between loading and unloading. Are you going to come that way? What's what he doing? Trying, well, he looks like a bleeding nutcase to me. That's Where my... do you get your bleeding haircut? Number seven, the silent scream. Open your mouth and eyes as wide as you can. Testing the muscles against the skin and bone that hold the face together. Try to tear your face apart. Yeah, what's your game then? Uh, grand is the name, Number and uh, money is the game. Face. Would you care to play? To bottom. Make it get as tiny as you can. Try and make your face disappear. Hey, just a minute, just a, What's that you said then? Can you see this facsimile yes, yes. of her majesty? Yes, go, go bless her. Now, just a minute. What was that you said then before? Uh, my suggestion is that if you're prepared to eat that parking ticket, I will give you 500 pounds sterling for eating it. What do you mean by that? I mean, what do you mean? Yeah. Eat, eat that stack. It's quite simple. You just put the ticket, my good fellow, into your mouth, oh. chew it up, and you swallow it. And I give you these 500 pounds. Just about a minute, right. Just a minute. Number 12. Number 12. When sitting in a car, place your hands on the outside of the steering wheel and push it with all your strength. Combine with the exercise, silent scream and tiny face. Silent scream, tiny face. Yes, now listen, here. Are you, are you telling me that you... You will give me 500 quid? Yes, to, to, eat, to eat, that eat that ticket. Eat that ticket. It's what you might call a limited it's offer. A limited offer. Expiring in, shall we say, I don't know, 10 seconds? Finish. Shall we say 10? Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah, start the cutter. You can go as quick as you like. Nine. Eight. Seven. seven six, six. Five. Four. four Three. Do you need, need the plastic? It's all right, it's all right. I just wanted to see if you had your price. Most of us do. Good luck, sir. I'm here. I'm here every Thursday. What's the nature of it, son? Something you can share with your dad? For the gracious few, a new concept in ocean cruising, the Magic Christian, fully air-conditioned and controlled environment ship, will depart Tower Bridge Easter Sunday on its maiden voyage to New York. Applications for passengers are now being considered. Denied passage on the question need not take offense. Remember, our criteria may not be yours. I hope it keeps fine for them. <laughs>
Well, well, what do you think they mean by, uh, oh, quite clearly, I may not be yours. It's to avoid offending people who may not be quite top drawer. Oh, I see. <laughs> Uh, how thoughtful. Well, I know Deborah and Simon applied this morning. I hope they won't be too disappointed if, uh, well, not exactly who's who, are they? Excuse me, do we mean Deborah and Simon Devonshire? Yes. Ah, uh, yes, Deborah and Sweet. Frightfully nice people, but hardly Burks. What? Hardly, <laughs> no. I just think upon water that, in my opinion, the maiden voyage of the magic Christian could easily become the social must of the season, what? Oh, Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. the auction yeah. is about to start. Oh, here we go. Uh, I've got a little work to do. I'll uh, see you later. See you inside. All right. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, this is a uh, Rembrandt, is it not? Well, uh, it may be. It's not been authenticated. It's certainly a school of Rembrandt. Mm -hmm. It's most frightfully dark. One can hardly make it out at all. Well, he was a master of light and shade, wasn't he? And it is a, a little old. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Uh, Dugdale. Dugdale, might I ask the price of this example of light and shade? If it's being sold by auction, then we expect to get about uh, 10,000 pounds. I'd be prepared to give you 15. Excuse me. Uh, 15,000 pounds. Yes. See, well, I'm afraid I've been given instructions not to accept any... In that it's case, my final offer would be 30. Is that 30,000 pounds? Yes. Shit. I do bet, I really do bet for pounds. So it's a deal? Yes, good, good. I, uh, I like School of Rembrandt. St. Rembrandt's High. Yes, I enjoy all the French painters. Uh, well, Rembrandt was, uh, in a sense, Dutch, although he was much influenced by the, uh, Dutch. The Dutch. Rembrandt. I don't like the, uh, Dutch painters. The only thing the Dutch could paint... <laughs> Please. Yes, please, uh, restrain yourself. This is my painting. I shall be paying you 30,000 pounds for this unauthenticated copy of a French Rembrandt. There. That's a splendid nose. Oh, 17th century? Easily. Excellent nose. Keep that. You can burn the rest. Yes, unless, of course, you have any other uh, French noses by uh, Van Dyck or... No. Come, uh, young man, let's go and watch the auction. And keep your eye open for a good ear. Mr. Gerard. Number 133 in your catalogue, ladies and gentlemen. Dignity and Impudence uh, by Sir Edward Lancia. Uh, this is a Victorian genre picture. Uh, these pictures, not always appreciated, have now begun to find a certain favor among the uh, cognoscenti. No one back in Baton Rouge owns a Lancia. 
No, honey. And the colors are just right for our conversation pen. And this is a big one. <clears throat> Shall we start it at 1,000 pounds? You see, mark the manner of the others, young one. Don't tip your hand. That is the fool's game. 3,000. Mm. Right, right. 1,000 pounds. 3,500 from an outer gallery. 4,000. 4,500. 5,000. Ladies and gentlemen, it is not the usual practice of Sotheby's to encourage bidding, but 5,000 pounds for this fine Lancier executed at the height of the artist's maturity is really something... Go no. 6,000. 6,500. He's boss control. From an outer gallery. 7,000. 7,500. 8,000. 8,000. 9,000. 11,000. 11,000. 12,000. 13,000. 14,000. 15,000. 16,000. 17,000. 18,000. 18,500. It's against you, sir. No, I can't compete with these prices. All right, Herbert. Mark it sold to the old American twit in the front row. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to London for this great and grand historical event, the Oxford and Cambridge Boat Race. And as I look at it now, it seems that we've got the most perfect weather overhead. The wonderful conditions, they really are. And uh, our Cambridge, the Cambridge 8 have just appeared, and we're waiting now for the much-fancied Oxford crew. Right, uh, break it up, chaps. Will you gather round? I, um, I'd like to introduce uh, Sir Guy Grand and his uh, son, Youngman Grand. Hello, Sir. How do you Sir Guy has come down to put a very interesting proposition to us. Sir Guy. Lads, we uh, had a little idea concerning the... Race. Yes. Yes, yes. An endeavor, you might say, to make it somewhat more interesting this year. Cambridge are making their way to the starting position, but there's still no sign of Oxford. Uh, we are here, in fact, to make you a very interesting offer. Of money. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, think, I think they're trying to bribe us. <laughs> they are. Well, Oxford still haven't put it in appearance. The crowd's getting just a bit restive. It's really most extraordinary. I'm quite sure the umpire's got something to say about this. Oxford, can you hear me? I mean, you've actually come here to offer us money to interfere with the race. Yes, that's right. Oxford, I think you ought to leave. You have the wrong men. No, 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 Mm. But you see, we thought that if the sum was large enough, as large as that. Now then, gentlemen, get a move on, please. And here's Oxford at last. Well, I make him about, oh, about five minutes late. That's better. I think this is the first time in the history of the race that any crew has been late into the water. Get ready. Are you ready? Row! And now they're off. They're off to a good start. They're late, but nevertheless underway, and despite a rather fresh headwind, they're moving along rather nicely. Cambridge have settled down nicely. Moving along tidily, Sir John. Ah, yes. Splendid, splendid. The best I've seen since I stroked them in 28. Huh? Yeah. Before your time, of course. Oh, of course. Yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> now, both crews are rowing with almost perfect style and lots of polish. But now as I look, it, Cambridge are putting up the stroke now. And as they shoot Hammersmith Bridge, I make Cambridge about, or oh, I should say, a good length ahead. The light blues are putting up the stroke a bit, son. They're giving it ten. Hmm, you might be right, Dad. What do you mean, you might be right? They are giving a ten. Yes, yes, uh, you and I know they're giving a ten, John. I was merely pointing it out to him. See, he's a bit near the game. Oh, I see. Why is he, is he entitled to that cap? I mean to say, why is he wearing it? Keep me head warm. Oh. <laughs> Keep it warm. <laughs> yes. 
Now we're about halfway along the course. Cambridge are still in the lead, and we'll just see how Oxford respond to this challenge. Now, with these lads, it isn't win or lose or draw that counts. It's simply playing the game. That's how it's been for 140 years over this boat race, and that's how it is today on the Thames here. And... Good God! What on earth is going on? For heaven's sake. The bloody swine have cut their water line. You're out of your water. Well, it looks like a change of tactics for the dark blues, eh, Dad? Hold on, son. Let's not jump to conclusions. They're going to ram them amidships. Oh, God! They've been practicing. Yes, what do you make of it, John? Well, it would never have happened in my day. No, or mine. Well, it's happening in mine. It seems that the light blues have lost their all too hastily acquired polish, eh, son? And now the dark blues are turning back. Good lads, uh, going back to lend a hand. Looks like some kind of a punch. Oh, he's a very nasty taste in the mouth. <laughs> yes, indeed. Come, come here, John, come. Anything that leaves a nasty taste in the mouth is great. <laughs> uh, what? Uh, John, uh, th thank you. Could you just uh, put a quick photo together there? Uh, thank you. It's a disgrace. The whole thing is a disgrace. Bloody students! What's going on there, umpire? Infringement! Yes, umpire, what's oh, going yeah. on? What, what is it? You then! How dare you, Hello, this is Michael Aspel, and welcome once again to another edition of People Are Talking About. Well, these days... Well, what's going now? It's uh, 25, 25, 24, I think. It's this fantastic new dream ship, the Magic Christian. Now let's meet the man who's going to be at the helm for her maiden voyage, Captain Reginald K. Klaus. Good afternoon, Captain. How do you do? How do you do? Sit yourself down. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. Now, Captain, you're no stranger to distinguished command, but how does it feel to be selected for what must be the most coveted captaincy in the history of seamanship? Oh, quite an honor, I think I'd say. An honor, yes. And how does the ship feel? Satisfactory? Satisfactory. She's a marvelous ship, sir. So, uh, how would you sum up? After 35 years of service to Queen and Sea, I've never looked forward so eagerly to a new command. How's that? Thank you very much, Captain Klaus. And Captain Klaus is not alone in his feelings, because tonight many people are thinking about the maiden voyage of the Magic Christian, and as well about the lucky people who are going to be fortunate enough to be passengers. Although, of course, these so-called gracious few will have to dig into their own pockets to the extent of about 5,000 pounds each. But certainly amongst these uh, beautiful, trendy people, it would seem the only in place to be this Easter is on board the Magic Christian. This is Alan Wicker at Tarbridge Quay in London, from where the Magic Christian, the most luxurious ship ever to sail from this port, is about to embark upon her maiden voyage to the New World, to New York. And we're here to see the arrival and the departure of the elite of international society. The men and women who shape the destinies of nations, the passengers of the Magic Christian. Ladies and gentlemen, you're invited to make your way to the marine room on the ocean floor deck, where dinner is now being served, and the captain is waiting to welcome you on board. So good, Dad. Mm. Oh. 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 Ah, Captain Klaus here. Nice to have you aboard. I'll tell you our course. Now, leaving Thames Estuary and having cleared Land's End, we shall fix on about uh, 47 degrees west by northwest. We're running through a bit of a shock at the moment, but thanks to our multi-head gyro stabilizers, I think we can look forward to smooth sailing throughout the voyage. <laughs> 
Now, here we have our radar, and here our photo plot. This is the master compass, and <laughs> this, of course, is the wheel. Comforting, we comforting. Use automatic pilot mm. from time to time, but I prefer to handle the ship myself. It may be an old-fashioned notion, but I still like to regard my ship as a woman. Uh. <laughs> Oh, bloody fool! <laughs> well, you were the last time. Nice to have you. <laughs> Good evening. Hmm? Guy Grand. No, Trapjaw. New Major Trapjaw. Our guy. Oh, how do you do? <laughs> I must say, I see few, if indeed any, persons of color among the ship's company. Oh, some blacks. Uh, blacks of Lord the Christian. Mm. <laughs> oh, bloody likely. What is it, dear? The fellas going on about jungle bunnies, were they? cried the rat. Let us in, please. It's me, Ratty, and my friend Mole, and we've lost our way in the snow. Oh. There's a picture of them losing their way in the snow. It looks very deep. What, Ratty, my dear little man, exclaimed the badger in quite a different voice. flat candlestick in his paw. Get up! Come on! Get up, everybody! Get up! Sounds like trouble in the passageway. They may have automatic weapons. I'll just take a shifty. Good heavens, what's all this about, eh? Well, there's a general impression, Captain, that there's been trouble on the bridge, eh, lads? Looks like trouble on the bridge. Trouble on my bridge? Oh, oh that'll be the proverbial snowstorm in August, and there's trouble on the bridge with the old Christian. Ah, oh, that must be three bells. I, for one, must get back to the wheel. Now, I suggest you all have a tot of the ship's grog and get back to bed. See you in the morning. <laughs> nice to have you, Bob. Rumpa, 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 Sir, 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 allow me to introduce myself. I'm the ship's physician, Lawrence Fago. Oh, doctor, what in the name of God's going on here? Now, now, Sir Herb, what's all this? Fair weather, sailor, cross and irritable. The moment things don't exactly suit you. Suit me? There are odd things going on that need an explanation. Explanation? Why don't we have a little tete-a-tete? -tete? Perhaps you could tell me about your childhood, your early childhood. I don't need any of that psychological claptrap. 
If you could please just give me some tranquilizers. Escape into drugs? Mask your fears in an artificial fog? Oh, surely you can't be serious. Oh, well, give me some decent English aspirin. Here, Sir Herb, try this. It's just what the doctor ordered. Hey, what is it? It's cannabis, Sir Herb. It'll tighten your wig. Tighten me wig? Why? It's damnable wog hemp. Who do you think you're kidding? I saw you try to ditch that stuff. Okay, buddy. This is a bust. But, Let's move. But, but, but I was in bed reading. Cynthia! This damnable wog hemp is burning a hole in the ship's garbage, son. We don't want that, do we, Dad? No, we don't. Let's really go and listen to the story. What a good idea. This way, ladies and gentlemen. This is, of course, the pool room. <laughs> Quite a nasty squall on today. Freezing fog and about two feet visibility. But you wouldn't think so here on that promenade deck, would you? Just feel that sunshine with its life-giving rays. Mmm, lovely. Good morning. 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 Now then, let's step into the sea spray bar for an aperitif. Testing, hot damn Vietnam. Testing, hot damn Vietnam. One, two, buckle my shoe. Hear this, attention please. We're happy to announce today's feature film presentation will be Men in White, the gripping story of love and sacrifice commencing in five minutes in the VDAC theater. Men in White? Men in White? One of the great classics of the silver screen. Am I right, son? Right again, Dan. Come on, oh, son, let's go. Why, you're looking at the all-American answer to the color problem. The first multi-racial head transplant in history. Oh, shoot. Well, never mind. There's plenty more where that boy come from. Yes? Your team, lady. Oh, just put it down on the table. Yes, please. Thank you, that'll be all. Not quite, milady. <laughs> no more bets now. No more bets, thank you. 24 black. No. Right. <laughs> 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 you pocketed my plaque. You won't. That swindle fellow, he removed my wager. I didn't see that. I saw him quite distinctly, he put it in his pocket. All right, so we now pocket it in my oh, black. I can hardly recommend this Beaujolais. <laughs> oh, I mustn't have too much, must I? Well, cut just a little bit more. <laughs>
the cattle walk the world. Lord knows I'm not a fool girl. I really shouldn't care. Lord knows I'm not a school girl. In the flurry of a first affair If I could employ a little magic That would finally destroy This dream that pains me and enchains me But I can't because I'm mad about the game. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Now, hear this. Now, hear this. <laughs> Please pull out your life jackets quietly, go to your cabin, and wait there. Maybe the ship's going down with all hands. Passengers are respectfully reminded that cabin staff are not, repeat, not allowed to accept gratuity. Thank you. There is no cause for alarm. There is no cause for no, it's probably a lifeboat drill. Better safe than sorry, what? C-Deck immediately. I repeat, make your way to C-Deck immediately. <laughs> Young, but what is going on? Ship's concert, I shouldn't wonder. The magic Christian has proven to be unseaworthy. I repeat, the magic Christian has proven to... <laughs> Looks like trouble on the bridge. What's going on? Memory serves. Well, thank you so much. In, out, in, out, in, out, in. During my reign as priestess of the whip, I have never seen such a mitigated slope. My God, what's going on here? Jacques! How dare this intrusion? Who are these people? Oh, these are, these are me mates. Out! Out! Ah! Oh, I say! Do that again! Out! Out! Out of my galley! <laughs> Everything's ship shape is so fashion. <laughs> I really can't imagine all this violence. Oh, really, guys? Yeah, huh? One of the uh, classics of yesteryear, is it? You say what you like, Agnes, but when it comes to family entertainment, the old Hollywood moguls can still judge a thing or two. This is the new captain speaking. Oh, uh, yeah, this. Oh.
back later. Nearly ready. Almost ready for you. Any time now. Not long now for free money. Free money. Don't rush the stairway. Here. Very soon. And it's free. Remember that. Free money. Cost you nothing. Arriving now. Guy Grant. Uh, Grant, yes, yes. This your order, then? Let's have a look. Is this right, son? Uh, 100 gallons of blood, 200 gallons of urine, 500 cubic feet of animal manure. Yeah. Here. Where do you want it put? Uh, put it in the vat. Put it in vat, Fred. What do you think of it, Dad? Very good indeed. A bit literal, I suppose, if one goes into it. And they're certainly going to. Quite right, young man. There must be a simpler way. This is it. Well, let's give it a try. Here, 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 here. What's going on? Oi, come on. Come on, here. You can't do that. You can't. It's against park regulations. Sort the regulations. You can keep here any night you like. Good night, gents. <laughs>